hope you had a good St. Patrick's Day and I hope you find it helpful to get a little bit of St. Patrick's own actual words and that is so important for he is such an inspiring person and doesn't it inspire you and I that one individual willing to do the will of God can be used by God to shape not only a nation but to shape other nations as we think about how from Ireland out into the other parts of Europe the gospel went forth. So today we're going to think a little bit more about Romans 8. This time we're going to be thinking about the whole question of adoption. Adoption. Let me read what it says in verses 15 to 17 of Romans 8. I'm reading from the New Living Translation today. So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba, Father. And for his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. And since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we are to share his glory, we must also share his suffering. Adoption. Maybe not the theme that you immediately think about when you think about being a Christian and what this means for you and I to be Christians. But let me think about some others too. And uh, adoption, often people think about it as kind of the lesser. It's great to be born into a family and you're the natural child and adoption is something less. And maybe it is a bit of a disadvantage. Well, let me, let me tell you about some people who've been adopted even in ordinary everyday life. Ingrid Bergman, who played Gladys Aylward in that film about her life. What about Richard Burton, the famous actor? who often is identified with Elizabeth Taylor, or Eric Clapton, or John Lennon. There's two great pop stars, politicians like Bill Clinton, or Mother Teresa, or Eric Clapton, another one there, maybe I mentioned him. And the one that stands out for me me is Augustus Caesar, who became the emperor of Rome at one time. You see, interesting in Rome, because in that culture, the practice was, a, was something that was performed by the upper classes, where a large number of adoptions were performed by the senators and, this, this, and through those who were in the Senate. Succession and family legacy were important. And so the Romans always needed ways to pass down their fortune, keep the good name if they hadn't got a, a son, and so they would adopt one. It was a way to guarantee that they had succession to follow on. Another very famous or infamous Roman emperor was Nero, and it was Claudius who adopted his stepson, and then he changed his name to Nero Claudius Caesar. So, you know, adoption is something that's been in culture, and in that culture it has been used to achieve some really important things for the lives of those who were involved in it. But for Christians, what does it really mean? Well, justification is the basic blessing, and on the basis of being justified by faith, we then are adopted by God into his family. John chapter 1 tells us that that to as many as believed him, he gave them the right to become the children of God. They were not born of a human will or human decision, but they were born of God. And this is really giving us this idea that we have been born again into this family. We've been adopted into God's family now. And what does that mean for us? Well, it means us that God loves us just the same way that he loves his own son. Listen to the end of Romans 8. It says, For I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from the love of God. And that, of course, follows on from the earlier part of the chapter that we read just a few moments ago. He goes on to say that nothing at all, neither death nor life, nor angels, nor demons, nor fears for today, nor worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. Indeed, nothing in the whole of creation can separate us from God's love. That alone is worth meditating upon as you and I think about your life life and I think about mine today. All those things that may threaten us, threaten our sense of peace and security, life and death, whatever else is in between. 
all of those things, none of them can threaten this position that we are loved as God loves his only son. But it also means that we can then address God as our heavenly father. The Lord himself, the Lord Jesus said, when you pray, say, our father who art in heaven. And of course, even the very capacity to pray itself, to come to God, is a gift to those who are his adopted children. You know that in the scriptures it speaks about God as the how much more father. You know, earthly parents, if your son asks you for a piece of bread, you're not going to give him a stone. Or if he asks you for a fish, you're not going to give him a scorpion. How much more will your father good give, good give good gifts to those that ask? And look, adds in the Holy Spirit to those that ask. So in addressing God as our Heavenly Father, it means that we can, we can come to him and we can trust him for really, really good things. The good things, the best things. And what earthly father would not want to give his child the best? So we must then realize that our Heavenly Father wants to give us something that's really good. But not only does it mean that God loves us and we address God as our Father and we trust him for the how much more, but also it means that we imitate him like father, like son. Isn't that what we say? Like father, like child. And that is true that the, the scripture teaches us that we ought to be like our father. We should show the father's characteristics. We should want to have that about us, which is God-like. I'm going to be speaking on, on Sunday, God willing, about passage in Luke where it talks about loving your enemies. And part of the reason for saying that to us is that it says that since your father is merciful, you should also be merciful too. And so it is possible for us. In fact, it's not only possible, it's really, I think it's really important that we do it. It's not just possible, it's we ought to do it. It should become the normal, natural expression of our childlikeness of our Heavenly Father. If we are born again of the Holy Spirit and the character of Christ is being shaped in us, surely we ought to begin to imitate him. We should look like the Lord in our words, thoughts, actions and behaviour. And then the last thing we can really say about this is that this instinct in us is really the instinct that is nurtured by the Holy Spirit himself. That's what it says in this passage we read. For you have not received the spirit that makes you fearful slaves, but you have received God's spirit. And for the spirit joins with our spirit, his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. And then, as this becomes more and more reality to us, it also stirs in our mind this wonderful truth, which is very, perhaps even we say, but can I really embrace this? It says, and together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. Wow. To be an heir, to be an heir of God's glory. I don't know if it's possible for us to truly understand or comprehend what that means. We are to be glorified one day as the word when we are to, to see Christ and become like him. And in the meantime, as we share some, we, we are, if we are to share that glory, that's our inheritance. We must also share in his sufferings. And living in this world, we will have plenty of those. But they, of course, they are, in the context of this, they make sense to us. It's not purposeless suffering then. It's meaningful. It has some good end because we're so identified with our saviour we will suffer and of course we'll think about this tomorrow but it goes on to say that yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory that will be revealed to us later so that's an encouragement so these are some thoughts today then on the whole truth about being adopted so i've no idea how you think of yourself in terms of other relationships in the world, but this is one that you can really have as a sure and certain one, that if you are trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ, you have been adopted into the family of God, and God is your Father, and that has got to be one of the greatest things that's ever happened to your eye, and worthy of praising our Heavenly Father for. So may the Lord bless you today. 
as you go out into this world or whatever you're doing, may you just know the joy of this truth.